Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to number 42 in our IC7300 from A to Z series. In the last two videos, we looked at how to use the 7300's internal tuner and how to use it with an external tuner. Both before and after tuning, you would probably like to know what your SWR looks like across the band or bands that you're planning to tune. The 7300 has a handy built-in function to graph your SWR over a range of frequencies. Let's take a look. Let's have a look at the SWR graphing function that's built into the 7300. To access the function, you're going to press the menu button, and then SWR is up here on the upper right. So it brings up this SWR graph, and you have four control buttons for the graph. I'm on 10 meters right now. You can change your step size anywhere from, we'll get to the bottom of it, 10 kilohertz, all the way up to 500 kilohertz per step. Now, it's not very many places where you're going to be able to use 500 kilohertz per step. So I'm going to go down to 10 for now, and then you have the number of bars that you want it to put on the graph. I've got it set for 5. You can go as low as 3 and all the way up to 13. There's 13. And the number, each bar is done at the step size. So if you do 13 bars, it's going to be 10 kilohertz between each bar. And one of the things that you need to be very careful of with this is you need to look at the center frequency, which is the frequency on the display. So you're going to set the center frequency. And if you have not done a graph on this particular step size before, or if you did a graph on a different step size, it shows you the bottom and top and center frequencies on the display, and it's actually live. So you can see as I'm changing, 710 is in the middle here, and it shows you the bottom and the top. The thing that you need to be careful of is you need to look at the bottom and the top frequencies and make sure that these fall within your privileges for whatever license class you hold. If you actually tune completely out of the band, it, it'll still show the frequency here, but it won't transmit out of the band. But if it's in the band, but it's not a part that you are legally licensed to transmit on, it will transmit. So you need to be a little careful there. So I'm going to go back to five steps just to keep this simple for now. I have the antenna tuner off because I want to see how this antenna actually looks with no tuner on 10 meters. We'll talk about this recall button in a minute. But then you simply hit the play stop button to start the graph. Uh, one thing first, we're going to set our power. Now the manual suggests setting it to 30 watts. So that would be 30% on HF. I actually like setting it just to 10%. I don't want to use any more power than I need to, and it seems to work fine and creates the graph fine at 10 watts. The one thing that I don't care for about this function is there is no way to identify because the way that you increment through the steps is you just key the mic, and it does not take any audio or transmit any audio. So even if you announce your call sign and that you're testing each time you key the mic it doesn't actually broadcast any audio as far as I can tell so let's try this we're gonna do five steps center frequency is 714 so it's gonna go from 694 to 734 so I'm just gonna hit the play button and it doesn't do anything until you key the mic and you have to key the mic once for each step for each bar so So that just graphed my SWR through that frequency range. Now on 10 meters, there is actually a pretty large frequency range. It goes, the, the phone portion of the band goes from 28.3 all the way up to 29.7. So we could graph a little bit larger portion of this. 
And if I tune this up, I think the middle of that range that I just announced would be right about 29.0. So let's try a little bit larger step size here. We'll go right there. And then we'll change the step size to 50. And that takes us 28.9 to 29.1. And if I go 100 kilohertz, that's 28.8 to 29. Wait a minute. Did that? Uh, uh, there we go. Yeah, no, that's right. Sorry. I have to do math in my head for this. And 500 kilohertz actually goes outside of the band because that's 28 all the way up to 300. So if we do 50 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, and we do 7 bars, that's 28.7 to 29.3. 9 bars, well, that's a pretty big chunk of the band. So let's just do 9 bars, and we'll hit the play button, and we'll check the antenna over a larger range. And you can see... This particular antenna that I have is actually a little better toward the high end. You can see the graph going down here. So this is a great way to check out your antenna and see how it how it works. You can also see how broad it is with the tuner and how much tuning you may need to do in different areas by engaging the tuner and then repeating the same test. Now one little quirk, and they don't mention this in the manual, is once you have recorded a set, you'll notice I'm at 29, and it's at 29 here. If I tune the dial now, the little arrow on the bottom of the display follows where I'm going, and then it just goes to a little flashing right arrow if I go off on the high side, and a flashing left arrow over here, and it doesn't show me the actual frequencies I'm going to be on anymore. Now if I tune to a different place, uh, let's get back up here. If I tune to a different place here, um, let's say here, and then I hit the play button, then it moves the center frequency, oh I'm sorry, it, it moves wherever that arrow was to it. So here's the little quirk that I found um, that you can get this to display your frequencies at both sides as you're moving. You have to do uh, another measurement. Oh, I can't. Oh, that's the other thing. Once you've hit the play button, so it's waiting for me to key the mic right now, nothing works. None of the buttons anywhere on the radio will work. You can fix that by just stopping it, and that aborts the test. If you do a measurement at a different step size, so we'll just do it at 50 kilohertz. Oh, I have to hit play first. And I think I'm going to lower the step size. Now, at the 50 kilohertz step, again, I get the little arrow moving, and it won't show me the frequencies in real time. But if I go back to the 100 kilohertz step, now, since my last measurement was recorded at the different step size, it goes back to the live display on this step size. Not really sure why it's set up that way. They don't talk about this in the manual, but if you want to see your upper and lower limits live as you're going, you need to do a measurement on a different step size and then switch to the step size you actually want. So... I'm just going to do a 10 kilohertz step, and we'll go back to five bars here. And the top of the band is 28 or 29.7, so I'm going to just tune until I'm just below 29.7. And then I know 29.6 is well within my band. So again, you just press play, and that's that. Now, the recall button, you'll notice once you finish a measurement, it puts your center frequency in here. 
And all the recall button does is if I've tuned way off somewhere else and I want to measure that same place again, if you press and hold that, it moves the rig so that the center frequency matches what's on the recall display. And that's really it for this function. So you can choose a different number of bars. You can choose your step size. And it's kind of handy to see how broad or narrow your antenna is on any particular band or how well your antenna tuner is working or how narrow your tuned antenna uh, is, whether you've tuned it with the tuner or it's just a resonant antenna. That's it for the SWR graphing function. We've covered almost the entire 7300 manual. As we wind down with all the manual sections, I plan to continue on with this series with some tips and projects that I've found useful as I continue to learn more about this remarkable radio. If you find this video helpful, I would appreciate a click on the like button. If you're finding this channel useful, please consider clicking on the subscribe button. Additionally, you can click on the bell icon to get notified when new videos come out. I'm always happy to see corrections, suggestions, questions, or any other comments that you might have. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.